Hello, this is Shirley from Shirley's Adventures. Today we are going to learn how to make this lovely dishcloth. It's, it's made with using a magic ring in the center, drop down double crochets, and single crochets. It's worked in a round, so you don't really have any ends. You only have, and you change the colors, you do a border with the outside color. So the materials we're going to use today is sugar and cream and this is the cream color which is the background and then the blue is peaches and cream these are cotton and you can get these at any store so any craft supply store and the other thing we're going to use is I am using a size G crochet hook which is 4.25 millimeters you're going to need a yarn needle and and a scissors and what's really handy to have is some type of marking device to help follow your rows so just stick around and you can watch this to completion now I'm going to show you how to make a magic circle and when I first heard of this, I thought, oh, that's interesting, but I didn't know how to do it. But all you do is you, you find the end of your yarn, and you make a circle out of it, overlapping. See where it's overlapping? And then I turn it around so my tail is on the left side, which is over here. And my yarn is on, is on the right side. So then I go through and I pull up a loop. And I kind of pull it tight and I get my yarn wrapped around my hands like I always do with crocheting and I'm going to crochet two chains one two now to make a magic circle work you need to crochet in this double area so you do half doubles or you can do singles but I'm going to do half doubles you wrap around go down grab it pull it up until there's three on your hook and you pull through all three you need 15 of those it needs to be divisible by four so that's one two three you always gotta make sure you don't split it four five six seven eight nine Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So you have 15 you crocheted on and the first chain two will make it 16. So now you need to pull your ring together. So you take that loose end and just pull it up away so it doesn't come undone. Hopefully. So you're going to take the loose end from the circle and you're going to pull that so it forms a ring see how it forms that nice little ring and then the end of your project this tail that's here you'll use that to tie your ring really tight so the next thing you do you do a slip stitch into the back side of the chain three and there you have it magic ring how easy is that 
So the next challenge in making our dishcloth is to take our magic circle and make it into a square. So, you know, I did my slip knot stitch right there, so I'm going to crochet one. I'll do a single crochet and just go down and crochet right through that same stitch as a slip knot. Bring it through. We're going to be going in the backs of these stitches. So you're going to end up with um, like four on a side. So we're going to do another single crochet into the next stitch. And then we're going to do another single crochet into the next stitch. There's a little tiny one right here. And this one's going to be the corner stitch. So you're going to do two chains. One, two, and then another single crochet into that very same stitch you did your first single crochet. So that is corner number one. So now we're going to go across and do three single crochets into the backs of the next three stitches. One, two, three. And then the corner will be in the next stitch. So we're going to do a single crochet into the back of the next stitch. And then one, two chains, and a single crochet into that very same stitch. Okay, that's corner number, number two. So we're going to do three more single crochets. One, two, three, and we're going to do the corner again, corner number three, so single crochet, two chains, single crochet, that's corner number three, and I'm going to do three more single crochets, one, two, three, and we're going to do corner number four, which is single crochet. One, two, sorry if I'm getting out of, out of frame here, and then a single crochet into that same stitch. Now, if you remember, we began on the other, we began right over here, and we have one, two and you know we kind of have the, the third single crochet now this is I, I haven't totally mastered this yet but I know I have one two and then I am just going to go into a slip stitch at the top of that chain two at the very beginning before in the row before so there is our first row. Now I am going to do a second row where I'm going to be building on this row. So I just got back from going for a walk, about an hour walk, and I'm kind of sweaty. So everything's kind of sticky here. It's about 80 degrees outside. It's cloudy. It was raining. It's actually not too bad. They say we're going to have a little cold front coming through. Okay, so I did one chain and I'm going to be doing single crochets in the back of these um, stitches. So, so this time you're going to be doing five single crochets. So to start off with I have one, two, three, and four. Now this is my very first row, so you know I'm going to need one more single crochet at the other end. So I'm at my corner again, and this is where I do one, two chains, and instead of going back into that same stitch I went in before, I am going to go into the back of the next chain from the previous row. 
So this is different than the first row. So you go back into the next chain. So now I'm on the second side. So this is single crochet one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven on this side. So we have one, two, well, excuse me here. Three, four, five, six, and seven. So the same thing, we are going to do two chains, one, two, we're going to do a single crochet into the next stitch and that will form our corner. From now on all of our corners are going to be made the same way. So this is going to count as the first single crochet on this side so it's going to be a total of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the seventh one will always end up in the chain from the previous row. So each row you're going to be increasing by an odd number. So the next time around is going to be nine, then eleven, and then thirteen on the sides. So now we're going to do two single crochets, and we're going to go or two chains, excuse me, then we're going to go a single crochet into the back of the next one. And I'm going to just get you around to the beginning and then I'm going to show you how to do the drop down stitches for the next two rows. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now if you don't screw up, it will always work out. So I do screw up sometimes, so then I just kind of, kind of fudge my way around it. And same thing going to the back of the next one. Okay, now this, you're on the beginning row. So you've got to figure out how many more you need. Do you have one, two, three, four, and kind of, kind of like four and a half, five, six. So we, we definitely need this one as one stitch. So we have one, two, and go back here, three, four, five, six. And I say this odd little one, that's going to be our seventh one. So we're going to go into the back of the chain two and do a slip stitch. And there we have it. We turn our circle into a little square. Now our drop down stitches, I'm just going to show you we're going to go up to the corner here and we're going to do a double crochet to the row below. So we always start off with a chain one, always going into the backs of the stitches below. So two, three, and then I'm going to figure out where the drop down is going to be. It's going to be my next stitch right here is going to be my drop down. I'm going to drop it down to this one right here that was made before. So you're going to do a double crochet. Do that by wrapping it around and it's going to drop down. You're going to grab that piece, bring a yarn through, go and then yarn through and yarn through and we're going to stabilize that by doing a single crochet in the back loop of the chain two on the corner. Then chain two, one, two, single crochet in the back loop of the next stitch. And then the next one is going to be the other drop down to create the pretty little corner. And you just 
hoops you gotta do a double crochet always when you do the drop downs you're doing a double crochet and you're going to go down to the row below and you're going to be pull, be getting the top of the loop you did the back loop before and you're going to be pulling on the top of the loop so then you'll be skipping the back loop underneath and you'll go and do a single crochet on the next back loop and you just continue around the circle or this guy is a square now and you went get back to the beginning you you write you raise it up to make it the next the next row now to help determine where your rows end and, be, and begin I have put a little marker in here and that just helps me otherwise I find out um, I, I tend to start go, going into a spiral and that's not really what I want to go into a spiral so I'll just follow on um, later on I started adding another drop down in the middle and then I will add it to the side so if you look at my finished one here you can see how that goes you can see here is the corner drop down and then this crochet two and then corner drop <laughs> excuse me corner drop down single crochet two change single crochet corner drop down now then later on on the next row I added a drop down in the very middle so then the next row I started adding on each side of that so that makes it kind of an interesting texture in in all of the corners so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to do a drop down dishcloth so thank you so much Okay, we made it around our whole dishcloth back to the beginning row. I put this little pin in there so I know where my beginning is. Otherwise, I, I can't tell. It just kind of all looks alike. So we're going to go through this corner and work our way through it to get on to the next row. This is kind of the transition area. So I stopped where I'm going to do the double crochet. So I'm going to do the double crochet in the front uh, the stitch below right here and you know after this double crochet that you're going to need three single crochets before the next double crochet so that can kind of make it a little easier on the transition row so this will be the next single crochet on the back of this one so it'll be one and two and this is kind of where the transition comes in you have to figure out how you want to do this because you're going to be going up a row you're going to be doing your next row here so we're going to just go in the back of this one right here and just pull it through a slip knot to do the transition and then do the single crochet in the back of the double crochet and this is going to start our next row so you know you have a single crochet in the back of the double crochet you have one two three single crochet and then it says it's time for the double crochet so we're going to find our place to pull through which is going to be right here this is the challenging part is finding this in the corners and I use the end of my crochet hook to hopefully poke it through and also my fingernail you know kind of kind of whatever works but I'll oh, come on there and then we're going to do our double crochet and it's time for a single crochet in the back loop of one of those um oh goodness can't even think what it's called for the single crochet back loop of the chain so we're going to do two two chains you know one two a single crochet in the back loop of the next chain the very next chain from the row below and that's how we do our corners that's how you increase in the corner so now it's time for the double crochet into the front loop of the row below so like I said this is the kind of the challenging part trying to 
find this below. You just don't want to go in the same one you did your double crochet before. You just you go to the next one over and I finally dig it out. Excuse my camera angle. I'm still trying to figure out how to run these videos. And now I'm in my office now um, with a number of lights set up with a canvas underneath here. So I did my double crochet, then I did my single crochet in the back of the double. So I'm going to do three more singles. One, two, well, I guess there's three altogether. I did a single one, two, three. I did my three, and now I'm going to do my double crochet. So you just, you continue on like this until you get the size you want, and it should be symmetrical. And then I have been moving my little stitch counter up. I just open it up and just kind of move it up so it kind of goes along with me so I can keep track of where the beginning is because I did have an issue with that on my other ones and then you just kind of end up going in a spiral so thank you we'll continue on okay we're going to continue on here we're going to do some single crochets three of them so right in here come on over pull through go into the next one yarn over pull through yarn over pull through the two and go into the next one yarn over yarn over pull through the two and it's supposed to be three single crochets so one two three and I did a fourth one so I'm going to take that fourth one out and that is going to be a double crochet into the row below. So for a double crochet, you twist the yarn around the hook and we're going to find the row below, which is this one right here. I'm going to pull it up with my hook, go underneath, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that is a double crochet to the row below and that will create the little ridge that you see here. So then we're going to go across here with single crochets in the back of the loops. So I, it's going to be an odd number, so I believe it's going to be nine. So we're going to do this together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So you see this is ending on top of the double crochet in the row below. So we're going to extend the double crochet one outside of that to continue that ridge effect there. So we do a double crochet, we yarn over, we have to find the place to go through. This is the front of the row below and then pull through, yarn over, pull through once, pull through twice. We got our double crochet and then we have three single crochets. One, two, three. So we have the ridge on the, on the corner. So we do a double crochet and this is where you need to figure out where to go in the corner. So you have two double crochets you're gonna do. One's gonna be here and one's going to be here. So we're going to do the first one, I'm going to pull that through, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull up, pull up again. Now we're going to do the corner. So before you did two chain stitch, so you're going to do, go in the back of one of those chain stitches to do a single crochet 
and the bottom part of that chain is going to be the one that you use in your next corner so a single crochet in two chains one two single crochet in the back of the next chain can you hear the thunder nice little storm going on outside okay <clears throat> and now we're going to do our double crochet to continue on with the ridge and we're going to be going into this one so we're going to go yarn over find where you need to go in and pull it up yarn over pull through you have two three in your hook yarn over pull through once yarn over pull through twice so there's the ridge we have our corner made and now we're going to continue down the next side so we always do three single crochets so we're going to go in the top of the double crochet from the row below so one two three and then that tells me it's time to do my double crochet in the row below so you yarn over you have to find the front of the stitch below and pull it through and then yarn over pull through that hole three on your crochet hook and then yarn over pull through twice and now we're going to go from this double crochet to this double crochet with single crochets in the back of the loops and we're counting one two three four five six seven eight and nine and this tells me it's time to do my double crochet so there's always going to be an odd number here and each side should have the same number in this section and if it doesn't then you've done something wrong okay it's time for our next transition into the into our other color the other color i'm going to add is this blue so we're going to continue our row here i kind of left off right before the end and here is my little pin to show me where the beginning of the next row is so we're going to finish off this row with our single crochets and then we're going to be adding our blue and we're just going to be continuing the pattern um, two more rows to give a border so each of my dish cloths are having a different color border kind of featuring kind of Christmas colors there's red there's green there's blue and each of these dish cloths I'm going to be making a um, scrubby with them so here we're this is our transition area we're going to do one single crochet two single crochets go through this one right here this slip knot and then we're going to be adding our new color in so we're going to be doing a slip knot to do our new color so of course I have knots here go figure so you do a slip knot by going in a circle and then just pulling it through the hole there so that is our slip knot for our color transition so we're going to be having two colors on here now so we'll be pulling our new color through through the hole and then also through the previous color so now we'll be adding our new color in and this is the transition area where everything is changing to the new row so we still need one more single crochet so we're going to do a chain one and single crochet in the next stitch which is right here and we're going to be following the same pattern we did before so we're going to be doing a double crochet 
uh, down in here for our corner stitch down below like we did before and you know pull through pull through twice and then a single crochet in the back of the chain stitch from the previous row and then do two chains one two and a single crochet in the back of the chain stitch of the previous row because the front of those stitches that, that's going to be what we're going to be using for our double crochets when we come through so this is cotton yarn cotton yarn for dishcloths okay now you know we gotta have another double crochet in here in our row below and you know pull through two times and then our three single crochets one two three and our double crochet and then we're going to be going across the long section here with single crochets so you're going to be following the pattern of the previous row all the way around so I will be doing that and then we will finish up together okay We've gone around our dishcloth two times with the blue, so we're going to finish it up. I'm back here at the beginning, so I'm going to um, do a single crochet into the back of this stitch, another single crochet, a double crochet, and this is kind of where we're coming to our transition area. So. We're going to do a double crochet and we're going to do a single crochet and we're going to do one more single crochet and this is it. We're going to go through this next one and grab our thread and do a slip stitch pull it through both loops and then we're going to do that again do another slip stitch and then we're going to cut our thread and just pull it out and pull it tight so there is our dishcloth so we do have another thread here this other cream colored one we're going to trim that and what we need to do now is we need to get these threads embedded into our piece of work so we can take out this little marker thing here and you can do you can embed the threads different ways you can use your crochet hook and just Pull it through and just keep doing little little knots is what I usually do another little knot here and then do another little knot there at the next one and then sometimes it's good to have a needle handy so this is a, a big eyed needle that yarn can go through and you thread your big eyed needle and then you can just try to hide the ends of your yarn and just just keep going along trying to hide the ends so it's not going to come undone and you don't have ends sticking out because you know people don't like projects with ends sticking out and it's just you know it's always it's kind of for me it's challenging to finish off sometimes because you do have you know just trying to get it right so I am trying to just pull it through so I have another little knot there and I'm going to pull it tight and I'm going to trim it with my scissors and I'm going to kind of pull it you know try to position it in there so all these other ends uh, will work to get them into the project now this end in the center here 
since this is a magic loop, a magic center, we will be able to pull this even tighter and get rid of the hole in the center altogether. So you just pull it as tight as you can and thread your needle. Thread your needle and just do some little ties in here with your needle, little slip knots. So I'm just kind of slip knotting into the sections, you know, trying to hide my ends, trying to get, you know, so it doesn't fray. You definitely don't want your, their projects to fray. And then you can also go underneath some of these stitches here and kind of hide your knots inside of that and just just keep knotting a little bit here and a little bit there and hiding the ends so it all becomes invisible to whoever purchases your dishcloth so there. and then we're going to pull that tight and trim it and by doing that and then loosening it up, it's going to hide the ends in there. So here is our square dish cloth. You know, trying to figure out camera angles here. There we go. There we go. There it is. Here is our square little dish cloth, which is very pretty. And what I'm going to show you, ah, go this way. I get it closer. What I'm going to show you next is how to make a scrubby so we are going to make a matching scrubby for this dishcloth and i'm going to be taking these over to j and j craftworks for my friend jarina to sell in her little shop so have a great day and my phone is ringing